This will be my fourth installment of my Digital Revolution video series, and this time we're going to talk about amplitude fidelity and calculate degrees of amplitude error that we may encounter when using various digitization frequencies and sampling rates. If you missed episodes one through three, go check those out first before watching this one. Um, I'll leave some links up here. And when you're all caught up, meet me back here so we can level up those UT skills. In the previous installment, we considered timing error and fidelity, which is how close a digital sample lands relative to the location of the peak. Given a worst case scenario, uh, this is all about time of flight measurement accuracy. In this video, we'll calculate amplitude error and fidelity, which uh, means how closely the amplitude of a digital sample and the resulting waveform represents amplitude of the original analog wave, uh, given a worst case scenario. So to start off, let's define fidelity. A good working definition for fidelity is the degree of exactness with which something is copied or reproduced. That's out of the uh, Oxford English Dictionary. Um, funny enough, when we typically calculate uh, uh, amplitude fidelity, we're actually calculating amplitude error, uh, which is technically the opposite of fidelity, and uh, more on that as we go. The amplitude fidelity of a digital sample is usually measured in one of two ways. Uh, percentage of accuracy or error from the peak of the analog signal, or dBs of accuracy or error from the peak of the original analog. Uh, percentage is easy to figure out. If something has 100% accuracy or fidelity, it has 0% error. And if something has, say, 80% accuracy or fidelity, it's got 20% error. Uh, but what about dBs? Now, that can be a little bit confusing. A dB, or decibel, is a unit for expressing the ratio between two physical quantities, usually amounts of acoustic or electric power, or for measuring the relative loudness of sounds. Uh, for us, it's simply a logarithmic comparison between two amplitudes. Uh, the common formula used in UT testing is 20 log amplitude 1 divided by amplitude 2 equals dB. Uh, using this formula, we know that uh, the intensities double when we add 6 dB, or they, they cut in half when we remove 6 dB. And a few examples are shown down there below. In order to calculate amplitude and timing fidelities, uh, we first have to consider what happens when we collect digital samples on some regular interval along our original analog waveform. This regular interval between samples is controlled by our digitization frequency, and when we compare that to the examination frequency, we can calculate our sampling rate, uh, which can be described as how many samples per period we collect. Uh, when we draw these vertical lines representing our sampling interval, we're basically splitting the horizontal time base of our cycle into equal parts from left to right. Uh, this makes calculating timing fidelity pretty simple because we're only considering the period or the wavelength. Um, these vertical lines can be thought of as radians. Uh, but what if I told you that radians were not the only way to measure a cycle? So let's start with a really simple shape that we're all familiar with, a circle. How many degrees are in a circle? Well, as we all know or should know, there are uh, 360 degrees in a circle. Um, guess what else has 360 degrees? A sine wave also has 360 degrees. Uh, sine wave math equals circle math, at least for our purposes here today. We can take measurements along a sine wave by thinking in terms of either radians, which are best suited for calculating timing fidelity as seen in the previous video, or degrees, which are better suited for calculating amplitude fidelity. And that's what we are doing today, and I'll show you how. Just like a circle, any point along a sine wave can have a degree value assigned to it. Uh, as seen on the left side of this animation, there is a radius line spinning around the circle with a red dot on the end of it. Uh, we call this a phaser, and as the phaser makes its way around the circle, it plots the sine wave along the uh, horizontal x-axis, which represents time, and the vertical y-axis representing amplitude displacement. Um, in this animation, the separation between the gray dots is 4.5 degrees. Uh, notice how compressed the dots are near the peaks and how spread out the dots are between the peaks. Uh, 
There's a greater amplitude variance between degrees on the slopes of the sine wave, especially near that equilibrium axis, and less amplitude variance between degrees at the apex of the sine wave. If we think about those gray dots uh, as a sample point, um, if a sample point is just one or two degrees away from the peak, there will not be much amplitude error because there's not a large change in y-axis position. But as the sample points get further away in degrees from the peak, there will be a greater and greater amplitude error because y-axis separation increases more and more as we approach the equilibrium axis. Now let's consider a scenario. We've got our sine wave here. The max peak of this sine wave is marked with the red X. Uh, let's say a sample lands directly on the peak. How many degrees away from the peak is the sample? Well, the sample is going to be located zero degrees away from the peak because it is directly on the peak. Cosine of zero equals one, meaning at zero degrees away from the peak, we have achieved 100% of the amplitude of the wave. Convert 100% accuracy or 0% error to a dB, and you can see that we are zero dBs away from the peak. We have achieved perfect amplitude fidelity. Let's consider another scenario. Let's say that a sample lands at zero degrees on the equilibrium axis. How many degrees away from the peak would this sample be located? Well, we can show that the sample is located at 90 degrees away from the peak. Cosine of 90 is zero, meaning that at 90 degrees away from the peak, um, we have 0% accuracy and 100% error. And if we try to convert 0% accuracy to a dB, our calculator will show an error message because mathematically there are an infinite number of dBs between 100% and 0%. So let's say if this happens, we're going to probably have bad results. We have concluded that when a digital sample lands directly on the analog peak, you have 100% accuracy and 0% error, AKA perfect amplitude fidelity. And when a sample lands 90 degrees away from the peak, you have 0% accuracy and 100% error, AKA a full loss of amplitude fidelity. But what about when sample points land anywhere in between? Uh, now we're getting somewhere. We can calculate amplitude fidelity by considering a few parameters. Uh, and basically we're comparing the sample proximity or location uh, relative to the true analog peak. Uh, the first thing to consider is the separation in degrees between two consecutive samples. This is known as phase spread. Uh, phase spread is calculated by taking the 360 degrees in a sine wave, dividing that by the number of samples per period. So 360 divided by number of samples gives you your phase spread. The next thing that we might consider would be something called phase error. And that means just degrees of separation between any sample in the true analog peak location. And then uh, most importantly, maximum phase error. Uh, this is a condition that occurs when the true analog peak is perfectly centered between two consecutive samples and we lose all the amplitude information above the horizontal line that connects those samples. Uh, phase spread divided by two equals maximum phase error. If I do a cosine of my maximum phase error, I can get a percentage of accuracy, and then I can convert that to a dB and figure out my dB error. This is what we'll practice on the next few examples. For the first scenario, we'll consider using a five megahertz probe and a 10 megahertz digitization frequency, which would result in two samples per period that are spaced equally along the cycle. We could also call this uh, Nyquist sampling limit or absolute minimum sampling. The best case scenario is that we get a sample on both the positive and negative peaks, meaning amplitude and timing fidelities have been preserved. If we take 360 degrees and divide it by two samples per period, we can arrive at a phase spread of 180 degrees. This time I shifted the samples a quarter cycle to the left, leading to a worst case scenario in which the samples fall on the equilibrium axis of the cycle and we miss both of the peaks, resulting in no signal detection. Uh, notice how the analog peak is perfectly centered between samples. This is always the worst case scenario where we have the greatest amount of error between the amplitude of the samples and the original analog peak. We can calculate a maximum phase error of 90 degrees. And as we discussed earlier, if a sample is 90 degrees away from the peak, then we have 100% amplitude error and 0% accuracy. And if we can try to convert that to a dB,
Again, we get that error message, essentially meaning we have an infinite number of dBs of error. So now let's consider a different scenario. I've got a 15 megahertz digitizing frequency and a five megahertz probe, which would give me three samples per period. Uh, worst case scenario is shown where the peak is centered between two samples. Uh, phase spread would be 120 degrees between samples. And if I divide that by two, I get my maximum phase error of 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5, which means 50% accuracy and 50% error. Convert that to a dB and I can show that I have six dBs of amplitude error at this condition. Okay, let's look at another scenario. 20 megahertz digitizing frequency, five megahertz probe resulting in four samples per period. Uh, the worst case scenario is shown where the peak is centered between two consecutive samples. My phase spread uh, can be calculated to uh, 90 degrees between samples. And if I divide that by two, I've got 45 degrees between the sample and the peak. Cosine of 45 is 0 0.7, which means we have 70% accuracy, 30% error. And then if I convert that to a dB, I can show three dBs of amplitude error. Let's try another one. Uh, 25 megahertz digitizing frequency with a five megahertz probe. And that's gonna give me five samples per period, AKA ideal minimum sampling. Again, I've got the worst case scenario shown where the peak is centered between two samples. Uh, the phase spread is 360 divided by five, which is gonna tell me there's 72 degrees between samples. Divide that by two and I get my maximum phase error of 36 degrees between the sample and the peak. Cosine of 36 is 0.81. Uh, which tells me I've got about 81% accuracy and 19% error. And if I convert that to a dB, I get about 1.84 dBs. Um, five times the probe frequency, which gives us five samples per period, is the minimum digitization frequency allowed for encoded phase durée in ASME Section 5, Article 4, Mandatory Appendix 5. We use this because we can keep within two dBs of amplitude error. For the next scenario, we'll consider using a 5 megahertz probe and a 100 megahertz digitizing frequency, which would result in 20 samples per period. 100 megahertz is the default digitization frequency in many of today's instruments, and that's before any compression or subsampling or points quantity. More on that later. Uh, the more samples you collect, the closer and closer you get to the peak position, no matter where the samples are along your waveform, which means the better our timing and amplitude fidelities will be. Uh, the worst case scenario is shown again where the peak is centered between two samples, but notice there's not a lot of daylight between the samples and the peak. Uh, phase spread is gonna be about 18 degrees between samples. And if I divide that by two, I can show that there are nine degrees between the sample and the peak. Cosine of nine degrees is about uh, 0.987, which would be 98.7% accuracy and about 1.3% error. And if we convert that to a dB, we're about 0.1 dBs away from the peak. So just to recap what we observed, the more samples per period we get, the greater our timing and uh, amplitude accuracies are gonna be, and the less error we'll have. But that increased accuracy or fidelity comes at a cost. The more samples you collect, the bigger your file size will get if you're saving data, and that also comes with slower acquisition or scanning rates. In an upcoming video, uh, we'll deal with uh, data compression as a way of overcoming file size and scanning rate restrictions. But for now, we'll just leave it there. In the next installment, we'll cover amplitude precision as it relates to the bit depth of your instrument's digitizer. Uh, after that, we'll have one on compression, aka subsampling, and related topics like points quantity. And then, uh, what will likely be the final video in this series, uh, we will culminate all of this into amplitude fidelity as it relates to TFM, the total focusing method. Uh, that's actually my end game with this video series but we had to cover the building blocks of digitization first. So uh, stay tuned for future installments. And after that, I'll get back to more practical applications and hopefully get away from all these PowerPoints. Um, if you enjoy the content, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Uh, take care and we'll catch up real soon.